I want to welcome the GMs and the wives, the godly men and the warm, inviting, feminine, empathetic women out there. So the lost souls are watching you, the free spirit. And if you truly have an unshackled mind with a heart that is capable of yielding to that which is greater than yourself, that is the free spirit that I'm talking about. And people are going to be watching you. It's going to be kind of weird. It's going to be kind of creepy. You might not even understand why some of these people are watching you. But, you know, I've also seen sometimes where I've had people watching me. And then when I let them know that, hey, yeah, I see you watching me. What, what's going on? All of a sudden, all of a sudden they want to step back and pretend like they weren't watching you or they aren't trying to see what's going on in your life or see what what really is you about <laughs> really that's that's what they want to know what is you about because a lot of the times the free spirit is almost like an alien to all of these other zombie walking <laughs> creatures out here because they you got like the zombies the walking zombie apocalypse people and then you've got the energy vampires and then you've got the free spirits and the zombies out here the the, <laughs> the walking dead they're just programs they are literally walking npcs where it's like they are when you talk to them you are not talking to a person you are talking to a pathology or an ideology or a dogma all in one whereas if you talk to the energy vampires well they're just looking to see what they can take from you at least the npcs at least the walking dead <laughs> they're they're just living they, they they're even though they're not living they're just there they may not be full of zest and vigor and be ready to take on the day and to keep going no matter what and to have this endurance of the soul but you know what at least they're not trying to to steal your energy they're just there whereas the free spirit the the one with the unshackled mind this is the kind of person where people are going to be watching you because it's almost like you moving the way that you do, moving with purpose, moving with intention. You're not necessarily going to just talk to people just to talk to people. You know, you might say, hey, how you doing? You might be kind and cordial and gracious and you might move with God's grace, but you're not going to be overly talkative to people because that's not necessarily something that you need to talk about. It's not really something that you need to go through as an individual. You are capable of being alone in solitude. And in fact, you actually don't mind it. You don't mind being in solitude. But you live your life with such purpose and dignity and integrity that you move a certain way that you do. And people just, they don't understand it because they don't know what it's like to live that life. You're not going to the parties on the weekend. You're not going to spend money on trinkets or gadgets or cars or whatever just to have them. You're actually trying to build a legacy and you're valuing your legacy above your leisure time. And even, you know, years ago, I started doing this, me personally. I, I went to a few parties when I was in my early 20s. And the times that I did, I just didn't really feel like I fit in. It was it was like I was watching people obsessed with losing their cognitive abilities and their cognitive faculties before my eyes. They were obsessed with losing their own consciousness and feeling numb to their experiences. And I just didn't understand that. I never got that. I was somebody that always found meaning in the deeper things and I would always find something to even though at the time I was atheist and I wasn't following Jesus I was very much concerned with that which is greater than me and I was very concerned with something that and when I say concerned I guess I don't mean like worried necessarily it's more like I was focused on that I was focused on trying to understand the universe. I was focused on trying to understand why I'm here 
like, oh, who, who am I? Why, why is it that I'm having this experience? It was a philosophical questioning that I would go through every time I went to these kinds of things. And I found very little connection to others around me. And even to this day, one of the greatest things that I've seen about being in the digital civilization space on different forms of social media and such is that you actually get to connect with people that are like minded. Uh, you know, the, one of the reasons that I have the Regal Change Academy offered to people in the community that we do is because when you are around like minded people and you're around people that have that purpose, that have that drive, that would rather live in reality and the truth than live behind falsehoods that they can hide behind whenever. When you have people that are actually about that life, it makes life a lot more meaningful. And ultimately life, even when you're walking this path and it can seem kind of lonely, and people are watching every single move you make, because believe me, <laughs> they are. Especially if you want to be a representative of Christ, let's say. If you are truly following Christ, what that means is that you are, by definition, setting an, an example of being a representative of Christ. So if you are being a representative of Christ, and people are watching your every move, you best believe that you're going to be setting trends. You're going to be setting the mood. You're going to be walking into places and just by your presence alone. And it's not because you have this super big ego or anything like that, or you just think that you're the hot shit of the world, or it's not even anything like that at all. It's just that your groundedness and your peacefulness. And even though you stand up for yourself and people may not think that you're humble or you're meek in your character, or your spirit, you're just saying what is, you know, I've had, sometimes I've had women think that I, it's super funny because I get <laughs> one polarity or the other with men and women usually. But in this case, I'm thinking about with women, I'll have women that will think that I am just so arrogant and full of myself. And then I'll have women that think I'm the most kindest and stable and grounded individual that is super mature for his age, etc. And it's so funny to see because these women are almost like they're usually the ones that I talk to in my community are usually about 20 to 25 years old. And if I'm talking about uh, trying to talk to them more on the romantic uh, side of things. And it's almost like these people are the same age, and yet they're very much coming to different conclusions. And yet the ones that uh, think that I'm arrogant and such, they're the ones that are the most watchful of what I do. They're the ones that are the most particular in how I go about my life and if I'm doing certain things or if I'm watching certain things or th they are very much paying closer attention to the women that know me. And it's not to say that these women that that do think that I'm kind and courteous and and gentle, but also portray a sense of of integrity and true confidence. It's not to say that these women think that I, like I'm just some guy either. No, the, these women actually have respect for me. Whereas those other women that think that I'm arrogant and such, they may not like it. They may reject who I am and what I am, but they're the ones that watch me the closest. And you'll find this as a man as well. If you are a handsome man, other men around you, it's going to be like this as well with the men. Some men are going to have very much admiration and respect for you. They're going to want to, you know, do business with you because you, they see you as someone that this is a potentially a business partner, right? This is somebody I could do business with down the line. Then you have the kind of people that, <laughs> you know, they're going to be mate guarding as soon as you walk in the door. They're going to be staring you down. They're going to be giving you mug shots and like mean mugs, not mug shots, <laughs> mean mugs. I mean, basically a mug shop. <laughs> depending on how you think about it, but 
It's going to, they're going to give you mean mugs and there, and you didn't do anything. You just walked in and you're just being you better than they can be themselves, I guess. So it's almost like, it's not to say that you don't have room to grow. It's not to say that you don't really, you think that you're the hot shit, you know, the best thing since sliced bread, but you know, your value, you know, your worth. And a lot of times people don't want to see that in men. A lot of people do not want to see a man moving on his own accord, keeping to himself and being responsible for himself. And, you know, it just gets super tiring sometimes to to see how much men are ostracized in society just by being responsible for themselves. Meanwhile, all of these other people who don't they're responsible for everybody and everything except themselves and these are the people that are pedestalized how the flying f- is that possible these people don't know what it's like to master themselves and yet because they have a perception of being able to master other people or other things for some reason those are the kinds of people that get pedestalized you know what those kinds of people are They're the energy vampires because they're not really creating anything. They're taking, making it look like they're giving. And that's the most disgusting kind of person. I don't like, I really don't like people like that. People that make it seem like they're giving. And yet what they're really doing is taking. And then if you call it out, well, now they're just going to watch you even more closely. But these are the lost souls that I'm talking about. These are the lost individuals. And, Sometimes, even though you may feel like you're an alien, these people have, (laughs) they have no idea what's going on. Some people still think that we're not headed toward a catastrophe in our society. It's amazing to me to see how many people are living leisurely still. I, I don't, I really don't get it. This is not to say that you can't enjoy yourself, you can't have some fun or whatever, but are you seriously not preparing for for what's to come? The world is getting worse by the day, and yet you think that staying home, watching Netflix, watching a TV show is going to alleviate or any alleviate any any distress, or it's going to help solve the problem down the line? Really? No, you need to be getting skills. You need to be training as if you're training for war. You need to be eating as if you're preparing for war. You need to do everything, dot your I's and cross your T's to the highest degree because this is where we're at in our society. It's getting worse. It is literally getting worse. And I don't say that to be an alarmist or to be a negative Nancy or whatever. I say this because... It's the truth. And I'm not going to sit here and lie to you guys. I'm not going to sit here and lie to you. And I'm not the kind of guy. It seems like some people think that uh, I don't really know things sometimes. And this might happen to you too. And it's only because you just don't reveal what you know all the time. Sometimes you'll be out and about and people will think you're like a Sasquatch or something. Meanwhile, you... (laughs) You could be their daddy. You could be their mommy. And they're thinking that (laughs) they know more than you only because they have this perception that they control everybody and everything except for themselves. Meanwhile, you're just over here keeping to yourself. You have self-awareness. You listen to your intuition. You listen to your instincts. And these crazy people, these crazy mofos out here that think they know everything are going to look at you like you're less than simply because you're meek in spirit and you're blessed by God, simply because you appreciate and respect the life that you've been given. These people don't respect themselves. These people don't appreciate themselves. The walking zombies, they are literally walking zombies. (laughs) They are walking zombies out here. They don't really, they're literally plugged into the matrix. They are an NPC. I genuinely think that these people can wake up if they want to, but it's going to take 
it, it's it's only going to be able to have uh, it's going to take God to be able to have an impact in their life. Because a lot of people have that God shaped hole inside themselves and they don't want to acknowledge that. But if you're somebody that can acknowledge that, if you're somebody that understands that you need God in order to feel any kind of resemblance of salvation, you're going to be the kind of person that does receive that because you seek to be delivered from those terrible things that may have happened to you or that have uh, that you did anything that has caused you uh, unnecessary suffering for your well-being you want to be delivered from that and you're asking God for that so don't pay these people any mind if they're watching you it's going to happen it's going to happen and they're always going to have something to say except for when you address it except for when you're ready to address it then they don't know what to do because you're just so strong in your spirit I'm five foot six and I, I just stand tall. I speak with confidence and I don't put up with any BS from anybody. And sometimes it's almost like people treat me as if I'm six foot five because it's, and I think this also has to do with semen retention because whether you are a female or a male watching this and you are practicing celibacy it is almost like you have this celibacy glow. And I do want to make a video about this because I think it'll be important. But man, it's just it's just like you have this aura of power and, and grace that just by you being who you are is enough to have spiritual authority. And when people see that you have spiritual authority... They don't need to question it because you are with God and God is with you. If God gives you the ability to have that spiritual authority, it's going to be a home run for you no matter what. And so even though I'm five foot six, people treat me like I'm six foot five, 250 pounds. And that kind of is where the hate comes from, from men and women sometimes, because some women really hate to see a handsome man keeping to himself, be responsible for himself and not needing them <laughs> like they really hate it. And then other women are really attracted to that. And so you want to make sure as a man, you're you're vetting the people in your life to see whether or not you're going to be able to build something with them, because if you can build something with them, they're probably not lost souls. They probably have or at least are on the path of having an unshackled mind and a free spirit. And with that being said, I hope this message was useful and insightful. And until next time, peace be with you.